The previous owner of this laptop left their data on it. At least all of the user profiles are password protected. That's good. There are a number of ways that data on the drive can still be accessed, but that's not the goal here. To be respectful of their privacy, let's start by reinstalling Windows. This laptop originally came with Windows 98 and had been upgraded to Windows XP at some point. So I'm going to use my 120 day evaluation copy of Windows XP Pro. At this step of setup, I'm going to delete the existing partition and create a new one. Then. I'm going to do a standard NTFS format, not the quick format. This will be relevant later when we test some data recovery tools. There is nothing special about this evaluation copy of Windows XP Pro. Installation is the same as the retail version, which hasn't changed in the last 22 years. I will be prompted for my area code because this laptop has a dial-up modem. Other than that, it's a standard installation. Now that we are at the desktop, we can take a closer look at the specs on the system. It appears that we are working with a 15 gigabyte hard drive. That will complicate things when we try a multi-boot setup. I'm sure I have a larger hard drive on hand, I just need to find it. Let's open up system information and see what else we have. Pentium 3 processors range from 400 megahertz to 1.4 gigahertz. So 650 megahertz is low end, which is fine for Windows XP and earlier. 64 megabytes of RAM is the minimum requirement for Windows XP, which is probably why this system feels a little sluggish. I'm sure I can upgrade the RAM with something in my stash. As long as we stay below one gig of RAM, will be good for the multi-boot setup. Moving along, we can open Device Manager and dive deeper into the hardware of this laptop. S3 graphics is a good sign, and Savage 9 sounds intimidating, but I'm not going to hold my breath because this is a low-end laptop, and I need to breathe. Whenever I hear a word like intimidating, I get this silly idea for a dating website. Like carbon dating could be a dating website for elderly people, and accommodating could be a website for differently abled people. I'm not sure what intimidating would be, but I would love to hear your thoughts. One of the first things I noticed about this laptop is the presence of both a floppy drive and a DVD-ROM. I do love systems that span generations of hardware. Here under Drive Controllers is Intel, which means the laptop has an Intel board. I rather like Intel hardware. They have exceptionally good driver support as well. There are a few other goodies here, like the infrared port and a modem. It appears that the maximum resolution for the screen on this laptop is 1024 by 768. It's not great, but it could be worse. The limitation is with the display itself, so changing the driver won't help, but we could always tinker with making the icons and text smaller. That would give us a little more room to work with on the screen. Zircom is a name I'm not familiar with. A quick Google search indicates they were an innovative leader in networking technology at the time, and they were in business between 1988 and 2001. Next up, this laptop does have a PCMCIA card slot, which means we can add, among other things, Wi-Fi. If we can add Wi-Fi, that means we have to get it working under Windows 95. The last device of note is the Yamaha hardware. I'm very pleased with that. Yamaha makes excellent hardware. Moving on, we can load up Hiren's boot CD and use some of the tools to get more granular detail on the hardware. CPU ID is going to help us identify some more details about the processor and RAM. Here we can see the CPU is identified as a Pentium 3E, which is a revision of the Pentium 3 that was more complex than the original and has a 256-bit L2 cache interface. 
This series of processors ran between 550 MHz and 850 MHz, making this system still on the low end. Another point of interest is this processor supports the SSE instruction set. The Caches tab gives us similar information to the CPU tab. The main takeaway is the L2 cache, while smaller than others in the series, has some advantages. The Mainboard tab has two noteworthy details. The chipset is in fact Intel, as I had believed it was, and the BIOS version, which probably has an update available. The Memory tab doesn't have much of interest. The CAS latency is low, meaning the RAM is pretty fast, which is good. The SPD tab, on the other hand, shows something interesting. There are three RAM slots in this system. That strikes me as being unusual. The Graphics tab, unfortunately, gives us disappointing news that we have 8 megabytes of video RAM to work with. It certainly could be worse. My hope of running Windows Vista on this laptop is dwindling. Moving along, Specky is going to tell us some more about the other hardware in the system. Under hard drives, it has some interesting statistics here. In terms of the hard drive itself, it has been powered on 495 times and has ran a cumulative 208.3 days. Also, the transfer mode is UDMA66, which is on the low end, as you probably already guessed. Under RAM, there are three slots being detected and only one in use. I most medium suspect that there are two RAM slots accessible from the back panel, and a third is under the keyboard. So far on the to-do list for this system, we have upgrade the RAM, and find a larger hard drive. 